What's up? I'm excited today to share with you some brand new software still in development, but I was one of the lucky ones to get a hold of it ahead of its release. It is the latest release from Skylum Luminar Neo. I know Kung Fu. Uh, you may be familiar with some of their other products, Luminar 3, Luminar 4, most recently Luminar AI. Uh, this is uh, along those lines. It's another photo editing software, but uh, it's brand new. It has some new tools. I'm going to get in today and show you some of the uh, brand new tools that they haven't featured before. And then also I'm going to share with you some of my favorite tools that have carried over from previous iterations as well. Uh, but without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the software. Uh, I'm going to start with the photo that I took, not particularly the greatest photo I've ever taken, but it's going to be a great example of uh, one of the newest tools that I think is really cool. Um, so jumping into it here, uh, this is a raw photo. So uh, when you're in raw, now over here where it used to say light, uh, we have develop, the develop tool, and you can see there it says raw in the corner. It recognizes the raw photo. Uh, first thing I want to do is boost the shadows here, bring up um, some of the dark shadows, uh, maybe a little bit of contrast. I think I'll boost the saturation just a little bit here as well. Okay. Now I'm not trying to get this photo perfect, but I, I want to give you an idea of the newest tool and it's going to be underneath the erase tool. The erase tool is not new, uh, but what is new is this one here, remove power lines. Uh, as you can see, that's why I chose this photo. We have uh, lots of power lines coming through here. And particularly, I thought it would be challenging to see where these power lines here cross across the water tower uh, cables because they look very similar in thickness. So I wanted to see what the artificial intelligence would do with that uh, as well. So uh, let's go ahead and back back out of this. All right, so I'm gonna hit remove power lines. It takes a little while for this function to work. I don't know if uh, when they release the full software, if that will uh, speed up at all. But again, this is still in beta form and it's uh, still in development. But take a look here. Uh, where the power lines were before, you can see are gone across the sky here. Um, there were power lines coming across this water tower. And what I wanted to look at was in here uh, on the uh, water tower. As you can see, it did wipe out some of the cables from the water tower. I kind of expected, uh, to be honest with you, I expected it to do more than that uh, because the cables and the power lines were the same thickness and running through the same areas. Uh, but it's really impressive uh, what this software can do. And, you know, there are tools that will allow you to do this where you can use the erase tool or the cloning tool um, already. But uh, the, the artificial intelligence, the AI with this software, is really impressive how it removed those cables. The next thing I want to show you here is not a brand new thing for Luminar Neo, but it's something that Luminar is kind of famous for is their sky replacements. And I'm going to pick one of the more over-the-top sky replacements here to show you the strength of the relighting tools. This isn't a particularly new tool here, the relighting tool, but it, the artificial intelligence in Luminar recognizes the colors of the clouds, the, where the positioning is, where the sun would be coming from, and it allows you to relight the scene. As you can see, this back here that was a lot brighter, it's now darkened because the clouds are in that area. Um, so there's that. Now what is an, one of the newer tools is the Relight AI. It gets its own separate tool now, and it allows you to control the brightness up close and the brightness further away. So you can see here in the foreground where it's darker, we can take the brightness near tool and brighten that up if we wanted to. Uh, in this picture, it doesn't really make sense to do that based on the way uh, the light is falling from the clouds. Uh, but what we can do is say we want the, the train to be a little bit brighter in that area. We can brighten up further away. And then with this depth tool, you can change how close that brightness gets to you and how far away. So say we want, we don't want to go all the way back uh, to light up everything behind the train. You want to pull that forward a little bit 
and uh, give the train a little extra light. So this tool allows you to shape the light a little bit more with the relighting, uh, whereas before the lighting tool, relighting tool in the sky tool only allowed you to raise it or lower it. It didn't let you shape where the light went. In this case, you're able to control how warm or how cold uh, the light is in the image. So because it's this would have been like a golden hour type situation, I can warm that up a little bit uh, where the train and the foreground starts to get a little bit uh, more warmth to it. So obviously this is a little bit over the top uh, edit, but I wanted just to show you what uh, the power line removal tool would do and the specific relighting tool, uh, which allows you to really take control over how you relight the scene. So the next image I want to take a look at is one that comes with Luminar Neo uh, to practice with. Um, I want to show you some of the cool stuff that you can do within the reflections tool. So uh, here we're going to throw in another sky. This one I'm going to go a little more subtle. Maybe something like that. Okay, and as you can see, the again, the scene was relit uh, based on the position of the sun and the clouds. But uh, one cool thing here is the reflections. As you can see, uh, it jumps into the water there. And if you were to, to move or say you wanted to flip the sky, we can change the sky orientation. We can flip it here. Um, not only does uh, the reflection change, but then of course the scene is relit with the sun more on the right hand side here. I like it back on the other side. I want to try to move it over a little bit. And I like the way that looks right there. Um, one thing that makes this a little less obvious right now, the, the reflection is very clear in the water, whereas the uh, reflection on the buildings is a little more rippled and not as clear. So we can go in here to the reflection tool and add some blur to the water so it's not so obviously fake. Not a whole lot, maybe about 10, looks good to me. Um, now you can still see the, the detail from the clouds um, from above on the reflection, but it's a little bit more in tune with uh, the way real reflections would look in the water with a little bit of blur, it's not so clearly defined. And of course, with this tool, you can also go in and affect the blur of the sky, uh, depending on your depth of field, uh, what aperture this image would be using. This looks like it's a pretty, uh, pretty in focus all the way down. So I probably won't mess with the clouds, but say this was a really shallow depth of field and uh, this area was in focus while this down here was way out of focus. The clouds would, would also be uh, less in focus because they're even further away. So uh, you can affect that down here with the sky defocus, um, add some atmospheric haze. You, you, they give you a lot of control over um, your sky replacement. So it's not, like I said, not so obvious uh, what you're dealing with here. And I think the final image I want to take a look at is another one from uh, Luminar Neo. And this is obviously it's a portrait uh, with a really shallow depth of field. I want to go over some of the tools that I really enjoy um, playing with here in the uh, in the portrait section here. Just like in the previous Luminar iterations, we've got uh, the essentials. Uh, these are color, light, um, basic enhancements. Down here you have creative. That's where we're adding um, the sky. We have different mood changes. That's where you can load LUTs and things in here, which is handy. And then uh, down in here, we have the portrait section, which I really enjoy. Uh, you have uh, the face AI, which is one of the cooler things you can do here. A lot of times in, in photos, you want the focus obviously to be on a face. Um, so you can brighten up the face here. And if the face is a little dark, um, in this instance, I'd probably give her a little bit of extra light here. Um, some of these tools, uh, just, a, just as a quick uh, aside here, I don't necessarily agree with uh, completely changing a person's look and making them uh, look completely different than they do in these photos. This is more just to show you what the tools can do 
And if you choose to go overboard and make someone look completely different than they really do, that's on you, not on me. I just want to show you how this works. So um, one of the cool things here uh, that I like to play with, uh, I've never really used it professionally much, but um, is to change the eye colors. Um, as you can see, our model here has uh, brown eyes, a little bit of hazel to them, but we can go in here and do a complete eye color change. That's a little bit severe. The blue doesn't look very realistic here. Um, but you can go in and give her, uh, those are really pretty, hazel colored eyes. And then you can play with the iris flare. That adds a, a little bit of a flare brightness to the eye there. Um, I like to do the eye whitening. It makes their uh, iris stand out quite a bit more. It's pretty cool. Um, Let's see what else. Lip saturation here on the mouth. If we want to play with that a little bit, make her lips pop. Again, some of this you need to take with a grain of salt. Don't go overboard with it, uh, or you can start to look really fake. Um, but it's still pretty cool nonetheless. Um, the next thing I like to look at is skin. And again, this is at your discretion. I like a more natural look and uh, do a little bit of skin softening, but not so much that it's unrealistic and not true to what the model really looks like. Uh, but these tools are there and I wanna show you how they work. So one of the ones that people like is the Skin Defects Removal AI. And as we zoom in on our model, um, we have some blemishes here on our chin. Uh, we have some here on our cheek. I'm gonna zoom in here so you can see the changes that are made. Uh, when we click this Skin Defects Removal AI, now it removed the blemish on her chin. I'm going to undo it so you can see. You see that comes back out. Okay. And it, it didn't get everything. It, it left some of the, the imperfections there. Uh, but if we're wanting to go a little bit further with it, uh, we have this skin amount tool, skin AI amount. So as you turn this up, I'm going to turn it up all the way so you can see what it does. Um, gives a really fake, almost plastic look to our model. Uh, her chin looks too smooth. Her skin up here looks, looks fake. Uh, it looks almost plastic. Um, but if we want to dial that back some, maybe start back down here. Um, one thing I don't like is that we lose the freckles in her nose when we do this, but um, so maybe bump it up to 15 to 20, somewhere in there. Uh, it gives, it keeps some of the freckles, gives it her face just a little bit of a softer look. Um, it's flattering, but it's not taking it to a fake plastic look. Um, some of the other tools that you can, that you can use here, the body AI, again, uh, you're, you're shaping the, reshaping people's bodies, which is, you know, whatever there. Uh, the last thing I'm going to show you here in the portrait section is portrait bokeh. Now, this image already is very heavy on the bokeh, so we don't really need this. But uh, for a picture that doesn't have any bokeh, uh, you can go in and add artificial blur, uh, artificial bokeh behind her. So I'm not going to use the uh, portrait bokeh for this image, but if you just bump it to maybe one, these tools become available. And this is what I wanted to show you real quick. Say you wanted to uh, warm, warm up the picture or cool it down without affecting your model. You can change the warmth here to the background, to the bokeh, and give it a much warmer image. Uh, and none of that affected our model because it's only focusing on the background when it does this. Or we can cool it down. We're in a much cooler look there. So whatever you're looking for, you have some control there. That's neat. One of the last tools that I did not get into uh, here, but it's the uh, under erase in the same place that you'll find uh, your basic erase tools and the remove power lines. It's a new one, it's called remove dust spots. I didn't have any images that had dust spots to remove, so I didn't focus on that one, but that's a new one as well. So there you have it, Luminar Neo. It's still in beta testing, so uh, it's not completely done. Some of the user interface is going to change. It's gonna be uh, not exactly the way I showed you here. Uh, but the full release is expected sometime early February of 2022. If you're watching this video before that, you can pre-order Luminar Neo. I'll leave a link to that down in the description. 
uh, as well as links to other Skyland products that you can, you can check out there. If you enjoy photography, videography, drone photography, uh, software that's used to edit photos and videos, uh, you'll get more content like that from this channel. So please, if you're interested, subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.